Seahawks, kind of the surprise team. I think everybody kind of expected them to finish last in the division. They end up finishing second, nine and eight, wild card, um, with a last minute win against the Rams, um, on some pretty interesting circumstances from a from a zebra standpoint. But I guess uh, you know, Lions fans are probably the only people that are bitter about that. So now again, this team. Last season, this time last season, everybody expected the Seahawks to be bottom five teams in the league, Mark and I included. Um, I don't think anybody was expecting Geno Smith to have his comeback season. I don't think anybody was expecting their defense to be as good as it was, their run game to be as solid as it was. Um, I mean, overall, I think they surprised a lot of people. They still do have problems, but I think that this team is in a significantly better spot than where the Rams and the Cardinals are at. And I think that Pete Carroll was not messing around when he said, nope, this is not a rebuild, it's a reload, right? And I think that, um, you know, second maybe only to the Eagles, their draft classes from the past two years have been like chef's kiss immaculate for what they've been trying to do. I mean, they've basically, you know, have a, an incredible trio of receivers and on the other side of it, they now have three incredibly talented defensive backs as well. So, you know, if they, you're have, a top, to bring back- they have a top three um, receiving trio core in the league. They have a top probably six or seven running back duo in the league. Their quarterback was the question when Russell Wilson left. Geno Smith has come in and he played he much better than Russell Wilson did last year. And yeah. he was, I mean, he was a pro bowler. So, not, and you add the fact that they, like you said, with the Niners, they've re- they've retained pretty much their both their starting lineups on both sides, and they drafted really well. And the, not only are they drafting these young guys that you think are going to do well, it's translating. Like these young guys are coming in and they're fitting into the system the way that they think that they will and hope that they will. That's there's very different things of drafting a player that everyone thinks is a good draft pick and then he doesn't pan out because it maybe it's not the right fit or they put him on the field too soon. They're drafting guys at positions where they need them right now. And the guys are actually mentally and physically ready to do what they need them to do. Um, you've seen them do it in the secondary. They've gotten some pass rushers. They got Jackson Smith and Jigba in this year's draft. I mean, you mix a guy that's a very much like Tyler Lockett in this ability that to run play vertical from routes. Too is just crazy. This I mean, throw is unbelievable. The tracking of the ball is unbelievable. Um, it's you, you have to understand that this is going to be, and any down thing, this play action shot play to guys like Lockett and Metcalf. But I mean, and this JSN is a bold ass well. play against this defensive, this I know defensive back court. He throws, <laughs> into, he throws into three, it's triple covered, man. Right. Like, and again, like that's nothing to sneeze at against the Saints either. Like, the, you know, again, one of the better, like, you know, DB cores in the league. And I mean, it's crazy what the, what they accomplish here. And now you're adding in JSN to that mix, which is impressive. And then again, like their defensive back core is, is, Diggs, um, they, they just picked up Witherspoon, and Woolen, and Woolen probably was the second stunt. best DB in the in yeah. out of the rookie class out of every. He gets so. he gets forgotten about because of how good Sauce was, but w- I think Woolen might end up being better than Sauce over the course of a, of the of their career. Like right. I really think that he's just as good, if not gonna be better. So you have really good things going on in Seattle. I I really like this team. I like them as a sleeper to win this division. I like Gino as a sleeper to win the MVP, and I like them as a sleeper to make a run in the NFC. I mean, a lot of people talk about the Lions being that new team. Obviously, the 49ers and Eagles are going to be there in the picture in the NFC. Right. Um, but this and the Lions are my two new teams of, hey, welcome to the show. Welcome to the club. We're going to compete. And if yeah. there is a new team to, you know, trying to compete for an NFC title this year, do not be surprised if you see the Seattle Seahawks in that situation. Yeah, I, it's it's definitely it's crazy how quickly they're able to kind of bounce back. They do have two weaknesses at this point that I, I do want to make note of because I think it will matter down the stretch for them. Interior offensive line, interior defensive line. Those were two glaring problems that everybody was expecting them to address in the draft. They didn't really. Um, I still think the guys that they picked up are good fits for them. I think that they were great draft picks, but those are two things that, were you know, they've kind of kicked the can down the road on again. You know, every team has weaknesses, but uh, I just would be remiss not to point it out. You so. always, you always, it's like you're always one step ahead of me and say exactly. Like, if you go back to this play, I wanted to show he, as he talks about, yes, the offensive line is weak. But if you pause Interior and you put it in slow line. motion, watch the offensive line now, watch what they do. Both tight ends here, 87 and 89, are in the pass pro. This is a full, and, and, and they do a, 
full slide left protection where 87 comes across to help block on the right and 89 stays as well. That's like a max protection, right? Because they know they're taking a shot down the field. They don't want to have any pressure on Geno Smith. I anticipate them doing more of stuff like this so that they can help out that offensive line that's struggling. You see teams that are struggling do that and they run routes with only three receivers instead of four or five. And they keep a couple extra guys in to protect. And if you have guys like Lockett, DK, and JSN, you don't need five receivers in a play because one of those guys is probably going to create enough separation to be open. And Gino right. throws the ball really well down the field. He's one of the best vertical passers in the NFL right now. He did this stuff in college. He's done this stuff for a long time. Like this is this is in his skill set. Making throws like this is not new to him. So I'm excited to see what they do. Um, found a good fit. Oh, also another knock that I have on them. Um, you know, just while we're talking uniform game. Why does the numbers on these jerseys look like the, and I've mentioned this in prior podcasts, but like, it still bothers me. It looks like the background of like a a PNG, like a backgroundless picture or does like the checkerboard print. Why do they do that? It looks bad. Just straight. There's too much going on with their jerseys with the neon and the, again, like Mark and I say, like, this is like eighth grader fashion sense, basically. I just, I really struggle with their home jerseys. I think they need to get updated really badly. I just have to throw that in there. I'm sorry. I just don't like when they do the all neon uniforms. I, yeah, those I are can horrible handle too. a little bit of neon as like an, as an accent, you know, as this is ugly. This is bad. I don't, I don't even know what it's trying to be. Maybe there's something with Seattle and like whatever that it's paying homage to. I'm not sure. I just think the uniforms need to get up, updated very badly. And look, Hey, you look good. You play good. I don't think this looks good. Just, you know, want to point it out before we move on to the other stuff here. So that's all I'm trying to say. Um, oh, here's JSN too. This, yeah. just show the clip. This is just an option route. We talk about like, you know, we talked about Coop, uh, Cooper Cup running these option routes, but watch JSN um, sits right in the zone. He knows it's zone, recognizes it. And then to be able to make someone Holy look shit. that stupid and then turn on the Jets and score. I've done a full breakdown on JSN on on TikTok and on YouTube Shorts, going over some of his best plays at Ohio State, showing why it's going to translate to the NFL. I think this guy's the best receiver in the draft. I don't think it was close. Um, And I think he's in a perfect situation where he doesn't have to do everything. He's going to be their third option. And I think very well by the end of the year, he could be their second or first option. That's how good he is. Um, I'm incredibly excited to see these three guys work with Geno Smith. Yeah, I mean – that's the thing is he has, uh, you know, Smith for his faults. I think he's in a perfect system because he has no shortage of weapons to, to check down to um, their run game looked really good last year. As Mark said that, you know, they have a very good running back duo to work with. Like it's going to be dangerous for sure. I think Seattle, I think Seattle wins the division. Interesting. I do. What, what do you think their win total is then? Do you think this is like gross? I think they win 10 or 11 games. Okay. Got you. I think I that's think fair. That- yeah, I think they I think they probably split the series with the Niners. I think they get them once. Um and I, I just think that they come out on top of this division. 